retro game. So let me see who's here. Hey, Sue. All right. So my friends, hello, hello. Welcome to Wake the Fuck Up Wednesday. Everybody just take a deep breath with me because like, okay, did you know I used to not really believe in astrology? <laughs> And then I've just had like so many things happen where like my, my astrologer, like once I decided to like give it a go, like totally called it in advance and with this, Hey, Barbara. And so, Hey, Sherry, is it Sherry or Sherry? Let me know. But anyway, like I was like, no, Mercury in retrograde. What? That's just, if it's like, you know, manifestation or whatever, but it's so true. <laughs> Like, it's just been like crazy, crazy stuff, miscommunications, all kinds of crazy stuff. I live in Alaska right now. I'm going back to Hawaii in a couple of weeks because I go back and forth, as y'all maybe know. But like my um, heater stopped working, which is like, I don't even have one in Hawaii, right? And, but in Alaska, no bueno. We had snow on Friday and the mountains are still covered in snow. <laughs> I woke up, I was like, damn, my metabolism is like getting slow and stuff. <laughs> so I was, I should get my thyroid checked. And then I was like, oh, the heater is not working. So anyway, that happened and it's been attempted fix three times now. So it's all good. We can just roll with it, right? So anyway, here we are rolling with it. And today I wanted to talk about rolling with kind of like really with, with work, right? Um, so I think it's episode 29. I've talked about, what is it? Yay, right on. You can be here on time. <laughs> so for, for you, it's like opposite. Woo! Good to see you. And so we have talked about in episode 29 of the podcast, like how to decide if you're going to stay in a situation or go. And one of those contexts is work, right? It's sort of like one of the things I teach is we always think it's the thing on the outside that is creating the suffering, but often it's our internal experience generated by our thoughts that really impacts it. Not to say that circumstances aren't real or that shit isn't actually happening, but that we can kind of impact our experience of it, especially our emotional experience of it um, with how we're choosing to interpret it because thoughts are choices, right? So this episode is not so much about like, do, should I stay at work or go? But this is more like work as a manifestation of our love, right? You know, a, a lot of people think that if they're unhappy at work, that they need to start a business because they're like, I want to be my own boss. I want to do my own thing. And you can change the circumstance and your thoughts at the same time. But if you're not changing your thoughts, like if you have thoughts, like my boss is an asshole, um, people resent how much vacation I take, I don't get paid enough, guess what? When you go start your business, those mindsets, which are very disempowering, which are basically like all this shit happens that I can't control. What's going to happen is things like um, my clients don't value my work and I'm not charging enough, or you're going to have thoughts like, um, oh, all other coaches think I'm not as good as them, or I'm underqualified. You see the thought pattern, the tendency to not own the experience goes with you. And this is why it happens in relationships too, right? Why we can repeat these same patterns in relationships. The circumstance changes temporarily. We're like, yay, I'm my own boss. And then when shit gets hard, which is when our sort of unconscious beliefs come up, our subconscious beliefs come up, our limiting beliefs come up, then we're like, damn it, it's kind of the same pattern, right? So go check out episode 29 for that, all right? But this is not just work like you as an employee. This is work like 
you doing your dharma, you going out into the world and bringing to the world what you were meant to bring. And what to do when maybe you're in a situation <laughs> where the external way your job looks isn't totally aligned with that love you're trying to bring to the world, right? So that's what we're going to jam about today. Now, it was kind of inspired by a quote by Khalil Gibran that I love. Work is love made visible, right? Work is love made visible. It sounds so nice. But I know a lot of you, especially those of you who are in situations that are very challenging right now, maybe you're a nurse on the COVID unit in a hospital and it's you're burning out and people are saying that you're killing your patients by withholding information, which is happening here in Anchorage, which is crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe you're at a job that you thought you wouldn't be in now. You thought you'd have moved on five years ago. So whatever it is, this is like, take that excuse and put it aside for now. We're going to talk about you're there, right? You're in that circumstance right now. What can we do, right? So, you know, many work environments are unhealthy, but we can like have control over how we show up in them. And when our work is amazing and inspiring, we're still going to have days that feel like crap, right? We're going to have days that we don't feel like getting up and marketing or getting up and having a bunch of meetings on Zoom again, when it's gorgeous and sunny out, whatever it is, right? So when Khalil Gibran is saying, you know, work is love made visible, right? This is where we want to think, how am I showing up at work and how can I make my experience one that I'm choosing to be more about love than something else, right? So like worrying about oh, I don't want to be here. I wish I was doing something else. We waste a lot of time, money, and energy doing that, right? But a huge part of why I think we are on this planet is not to be spending it in pain and suffering, but to be giving and receiving love, to love and be loved in return, getting Moulin Rouge on you, right? <laughs> so, so we're working. How can we take this huge part of our day that we spend so much time doing right? And turn it into something sacred. No matter what that is, right? Work is love made visible. And I will be honest with you, it's the only way I've been able to do what I wanted to achieve. When I have done things before from like, I got this, I'm going to work, I'm going to crank it out. I'm going to like, you know, like nose to the grindstone, do it because I can do it. Like, I eventually burn out. And this past year, I really committed to being successful and creating what I wanted without hustle and from a place of love and joy. I was skeptical, right? But it works. And what gets me up to do what I want to do every day is love. No shit. Right? I want to read you something from David White, one of my favorites. So David, David White said, work is intimacy and discovery. It is the mirrored representation to the ancient and heartfelt human need to be needed, to be seen, to give something to another, to come alive through our contribution to the visible world, through finding something interesting in our work, something a little more rewarding, a little more satisfying, and perhaps something even intriguing and mysterious, something especially that we somehow make completely our own. With the right work, the right relationship to that work and to the mystery of what is continually being revealed to us through our endeavors, we find a home in the world that sustain us. We make what we make in our work. We give a gift physically in the present, imaginative, imaginatively to the future. Our work holds us together, not only for an end, but for every step that shapes an onward way. 
So what if work was like this? What if work was, no matter what it was, what if it was our opportunity to infuse something, someone, and experience a place with love? And again, you don't need to have the perfect job in order for this to be true. It's easier when your work aligns with your values, but the only reason it's easier is because then you don't have to do as much thought work or manage your mind as much, right? So that's why we do the work in Freedom School and in the Adventure Mastermind to create your life so the outward expression aligns with your inner expression, but it doesn't mean you have to wait for it to be perfect before you feel good about it. And by the way, perfect never is going to happen, right? It's like perfectly imperfect. So this is possible in whatever it is you do for work, right? Like I was talking to this physician relatively recently, and he was like, uh, it, um, you know, I'm sort of a, like a, an unapologetic socialist, right? <laughs> I was just like, we need to provide like basic basic needs so that people can focus on like self-actualization and not like just surviving. And he was like, no, because then nobody would evolve. We would just be at a standstill. The reason we're as great as we are as a country and people are lining up is because people suffer and that's what motivates them. And okay, I guess fear can be a motivator. I mean, we know this, that's how people have historically trained their animals and discipline their children. But as we have evolved as a species, we realize, oh shit, there's like horse whisperers. And like, we, we can be positive with our children and they do what we want, right? We don't have to beat the shit out of them. Like, like my mom did. Did I behave? Did that motivate me? Yes. Do I do that to my kid? No. Does she behave? Yes. Like, so interesting, right? So like fear is a, and suffering is like a cheap way to motivate, right? Because our brains want to avoid suffering. But remember that motivational triad, right? Seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, and doing what's easy. I'm going to draw it out for y'all because I just love visuals, right? So can you see that? All right. So we've got seek pleasure, avoid pain, and do what's easy, like least effort possible, right? It makes sense why we like to drink and do drugs as humans <laughs> and like go out and buy shit to get a dopamine hit or like have sex addictions, online shopping addictions or whatever, right? This is what motivates us. But notice that avoiding pain is only one part of that, right? We have seeking pleasure as well. And when we can look at our day and be like, how is this a pleasurable experience? How can I make this a pleasurable experience? It's gonna be so much better of a day. So he's giving the example of like a janitor, right? He's like, like a janitor, like, like if we don't motivate them and I'm like, hold on, like, what is someone supposed to do as a janitor? Like, you want them to go to med school? Like, and what, we don't want janitors? Like, we don't want janitors to be happy? Like, this made no sense to me. And I'm like, my uncle was a janitor, right? And I was like, he was an immigrant. English wasn't fab. He was a janitor. He maybe didn't think it was his soul's calling to be a janitor, but his work was love. I saw it. He would smile when he came home, when he was at work. I remember he would just tell stories about the kids because he worked at a school. Oh, like how funny they were and how funny his colleagues were and how he would make them laugh, right? It was like, he could have been like, what the fuck? Like in the Philippines, I could have done so much more and here I'm a janitor. And instead he's like, all right, so this is what I'm doing. How can I make this love? And he went and he did it and made the most that he could from it and saw it like I'm providing for my family. I'm doing this. 
Mind you, this is not to be like, hey, settle, settle, stay with this and just be happy with shitty situations. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is, Shanti Deva, if you can change something, why be unhappy? If you cannot change something, why be unhappy? So while you're working to actualize your ideal life, how can you make work in this moment love because you're spending so much of your damn time doing it. And I'm not just talking about like being employed. Like if you are full-time parenting, householder, all of that work, how can it be love? Right. And the idea that people should want to do more is like very patriarchal. It's like, well, it should always want to succeed and get more and more and more successful. Like that's not how everyone rolls. Right. But how can we create more contentment and joy and fulfillment in our day-to-day experience of whatever work is for us at that time, right? So work is love made visible. What if that was true for you? What would that look like? What would that feel like for you? You know, I used to burn out so easily. Like everything felt like too much, overwhelm, burden, bunch of have to do's, right? And then when I looked at what was motivating me instead of coming from a place of love, it was like, no shit, it was hard to get up and do all that. Because getting motivated from from avoiding suffering from a place of scarcity and fear was not as joyful. And I had a whole bunch of shit on my to-do list that I actually didn't need to do because I was not coming. And I was like, what if I came from a place of love? What would I be creating today? That's when shit really started really growing and taking off. Isn't that interesting? Right? So now I can see how everything I do helps me express this love that I have for my fellow humans. Right? Like, what can you do to make your work an expression of love for your fellow humans? Maybe you don't interact with humans. Maybe you make widgets, right? How do we infuse love into these widgets, right? Like, may may this, may whatever this person uses this for, use it to teach something powerful and positive in the world, right? Infusing things infusing places, infusing others, right? So we also feel it on the receiving end, right? You've, you've seen this, you've seen when you, you've experienced this, when you walk into the airport and it's fucking crazy and you're like, ah, oh, my flight got canceled and you go up and that person behind the counter is like, hi, I'm so sorry you're having such a hard day oh, look, I I found this thing. You can get on this flight. Okay, enjoy your day. Or I'm really sorry. Um, Like, and I I know this must be hard. Like they're having compassion for you, feeling you. When, you know, oh my gosh, I love in San Francisco. I can't tell you how many times this happened to me. I would be in a cab and just have so much fun talking to the cab driver. Like they were so, I love my job. I love to meet all these new people. And many times, not just once, they would drop me off and be like, it's okay. Like I had so much fun talking to you. No need to pay ma'am. Oh, oh, right. Like so many ways, no matter what we're doing. Right. So Khalil Gibran says, and what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It's to build a house with affection, even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. It is to sow seeds with tenderness and reap the harvest with joy, even as if your beloved were to eat the fruit. It is to charge all things you fashion with the breath of your own spirit and to know that all the blessed dead are standing about you and watching, right? So it can be about what we're creating at work, how we interact with the people around us, right? 
So if you're in a situation where it's really, really hard to feel that love at work, okay, take a deep breath, right? You can work on changing that. But in the meantime, let's decrease your suffering as well. Increase the love that is being felt in this world, right? How can you also make a small change to have your work, even in the tiniest way, be an expression of love? Because the world really needs this right now. And we, we need this when we work because life is too short to be feeling bitter or resentful or bored most of our day, just waiting for it to end. Tick fucking talk, right? No, we need this right now. That's like, that's how we're meant to live, right? So yes, absolutely work to align your inner life with your outer life. And in whatever work you do in this moment, ask, how can I help it be love made visible? All right. I'm sending you off. I'm going to go hang out with tea time with my Freedom School students. Got my mug. Okay. Come, come join freedomschool.com. Join freedomschool.com. You should come hang out with us. It's awesome. We deep dive into this. So I hope to see you there. And there's one spot left on the Adventure Mastermind. If you want to come, adventuremastermind.com. Aloha. Come hang out with us in Hawaii. Okay? Okay. Bye, y'all. Have a good one.